Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for June 9th, 2022. Well, yesterday, just another day of gap, reverse, and then chop. And we continue to stay range bound um, in this market in a very frustrating um, wide ranging chop that is actually very, very dangerous for a lot of traders. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at some of these charts and see if we can get some information about how we might want to approach the market for today. Well, doggone it, we just continue to remain locked in this choppy zone, um, about a 700 point move between the top and the bottom. Every day is a gap, every day is a reversal after the gap, and then we just chop and chop and chop around on extremely low volume. And really what's going on here is we're waiting to try and figure out what's gonna happen with the CPI. Now today we have some data that could potentially get us moving depending on how that data comes out, but we'll look at that in just a second. So we continue to stay range bound here and unfortunately it doesn't look like at least at this point that is going to change so we're bounded between some price resistance above and support levels below and we're struggling to try and decide which way we want to go from here so keep a close eye on this if the bulls can find some inspiration of course if we were to pop that upside move then we might be able to run up test our 50-day moving average if those bears gain control and we start breaking down that's where a little bit of pressure could maybe come into the market um, and you know with our cpi tomorrow who knows who knows where we're going to go here um, taking a look at our technicals we continue to see that 50-day moving average decline um, i thought there for a while we would rally up and test the 50-day but it looks like we're perfectly comfortable just allowing the 50 day to, to continue to diminish down toward our price action here in the chart stuck between the 50 and the 500 day and just continuing this chop 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 very frustrating um, here the last few days so if we take a look at the spy spy very similar situation and once again we're we're stuck in this range where we're tied up in whether or not we're going to be able to get through this topside resistance or if those bears uh, gain control, whether we'll break through that downside resistance. And we still have our 50 day moving average above. It is declining toward our current prices. Um, certainly not a situation where, where most of us feel uh, very comfortable um, just chopping in, in a wide ranging whipsaw ugly market condition. Uh, volume remains quite low here as well. If we take a look at our QQQ, QQQ has a bit more work to do. One of the things that's interesting in the QQQ is notice that the last several days here, we've kind of tightened up the range a little bit. But if we look across here in that range, significant resistance above, support below, um, it just really all depends on who's going to get inspired um, and whether or not we're going to pop that top range or that bottom of the range um, as we wait on the CPI. Um, let's take a look um, over here. We have a little bit more work to do to get up to that 50 day moving average. Um, um, QQQ is already well below its 500. So we've got some work here to do before we can really um, shout an all clear here on um, the NASDAQ. If we take a look at the Russell IWM, IWM has remained remarkably strong, but yesterday we did a little bit of a pullback, but it wasn't a terrible day, kind of an inside day there. We've got some price support in the chart right in here. Um, as we continue to try and press um, through to really significant resistance level in the chart, um, along with its 50 day moving average up here, kind of capping that move at least at the moment. But if this can consolidate and rest, 
uh, maybe pull back into um, that um, trend, then there still is that possibility you could move higher here on um, IWM. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at our VIX. Now, our VIX has been another one of those areas where just kind of nonsensical, honestly. Um, as you can see, we barely moved here in the VIX yesterday, kind of hovering right around 24 handles here in the chart and that support level um, as we sold off. Um, very bizarre. Um, we sold off yesterday. We were down 300 points, um, uh, over 300 points at one point, um, and then surged back right at the end of the day, keeping, keeping us in this range. The VIX is just like ho-hum. We don't know what's going on. We don't care. Um, just kind of stuck there. But the good news is, is we're kind of slipping beyond um, that uptrend in here. So who knows? Um, I, th I think it's a flip of a coin as to what happens here when the CPI number comes out. Um, your guess is as good as anyone else. Let's take a look at our uh, T2122. Our T2122, this is unfortunate that even though we did pull back yesterday, we really haven't changed much here in our T2122. And with the gap up we're looking at this morning, we'll probably be pushing ourselves right back up here um, toward that bearish reversal zone. And um, that just means that we have, if the bulls can find some inspiration, we had, do have a little bit of an upside target up here that we can move up into. If the bears find inspiration, well, then we know we still have a big open hole here to the downside where we can move um, to the downside. So if, if those bears find some reason, um, just be prepared. Um, the selling could be... Um, could be intense if we start breaking support levels so watch that close if we take a look at our t2107 t2107 just kind of you know punted the ball yesterday uh, pulled back a little bit we didn't break support levels um, we didn't break resistance levels we didn't um, come up out of our downtrend uh, about 27 28 percent of the stocks holding above the 200 day t2108 kind of the same thing again just a punt um, not breaking the downtrend, not breaking upside resistance, not breaking downside support. So just kind of wandering in here, 45 and a quarter percent of the stocks holding above their 40 day moving average. We're looking, excuse me, we're looking for direction and certainly our T2101 is not helping us out here at all. And that's just simply because volume is so weak. Uh, momentum is extremely anemic here in the market. And we're waiting for, um, you know, that clue, that inspiration, uh, perhaps on the CPI. Now, we do have something that could move us a little bit today, and that would be our jobless claims. We have jobless claims numbers this morning. We'll want to be paying attention to that. Right now, the consensus is expecting that to tick higher. I've been thinking that there is a chance we've been hearing about companies um, laying off um, not a lot of companies um, reporting layoffs, but companies like Tesla and, and things like that starting to see some layoffs, we might start seeing that creep up. So keep an eye on that. If that were to come in stronger than expected, that definitely could give us a move in the market today. And then we've got a natural gas report, which not going to move us around, I doubt. And then we've got some uh, bond auctions, probably the most notables right here that 30-day bond auction. Of course, we have the Fed balance sheet. Um, we're rolling off that balance sheet now, and we're heading into the next meeting where they're going to continue that roll off. But again, nobody seems to care too much about this. We can have really bad data and still go up. So um, everything is going to be focused on this number right here tomorrow morning, the CPI, just to hurry up and wait here for the CPI number to come out and whether or not we're actually going to see inflation peak. When I look at oil and gas prices, I don't see that potential. Um, uh, and um, food prices as well probably says that number goes higher. Then consumer sentiment is one of my favorite numbers. Um, it, the market is going to act the way the consumers feel. So if the consumers are uncertain or don't 
don't like the current conditions, then the market can get a little bit ill um, over that. So watch that close. Um, you've probably um, already uh, probably already know this, but um, oil prices um, continued to rise yesterday. So it's probably no major surprise that our national gas prices continue to move up and set new records. And again, um, everything we buy, sell, or do has a direct impact uh, to these prices. And um, so we're going to see those consumers having to make some very difficult decisions as those prices continue to rise. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar for today. Our earnings calendar, you know, less than 20 companies um, confirmed on that earnings calendar. Um, and we're really starting to diminish in the notables that could move the market. But I'll cover a few here this morning. And if you want to catch the full list of notables, make sure you click that link just below the title of the video. Um, we have um, NIO. I know NIO there for a long time was a media darling. And NIO is trying to come up. Um, and we're broken, breaking the shorter term downtrend. We still have a lot of work before we break the, the longer term downtrend here. It's been coming up. So this could be an interesting report today to see whether or not it will move higher or lower here overall. As for me, anything that's Japanese or I mean Chinese related stocks, I'm really avoiding them there. Um, China's uh, economy is not in good shape and um, we've seen quite a few examples where we're not being told the truth um, on um, their results. So watch that closely. Um, let's take a look at um, HOFT. Um, Hooker Furniture will be reporting today. Uh, again, uh, not not likely going to move the market. Um, Lake is also reporting today. Again, not likely to move the market. And the last I'm going to talk about this morning, Signet Jewelers um, will be reporting. Looks like it's trying to gap a little bit higher, but clearly still in a downtrend and um, you know continuing to just work this this down channel um, in Signet Jewelers. So a lot we've got some work here on a lot of these charts that are reporting today and that's going to continue to be the case um, as we wind down earnings season so with that how about we take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today but before we do that guys if you can do me that quick favor if this is the first time you have seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on youtube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified when i post videos and if you find these videos to be useful and helpful if you could please do me that favor by uh, clicking that thumbs up button, leaving a brief comment. I want to say thank you too uh, for the folks that are going through and, and putting the thumbs up on other people's posts because that does help as well. It's the engagement with the video that um, has YouTube showing um, the video to more folks. So thank you very much for your very kind um, support of the channel and the effort. And I do truly appreciate the comments. Also, guys, thank you so much to everyone who continues to support the channel through the Buy Me a Coffee link that's just below the title of the video. You guys are truly awesome. Let's take a look at a few of these stocks. And please keep in mind, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to be very, very careful in this market because we know um, CPI um, before the bell on Friday morning means we, anything that happens today could be completely reversed tomorrow morning before we open. So be very, very careful in your trading. Some of these might be the kind of stocks that you want to just put on your list and be um, watching them as potential trades, um, not necessarily a position. And you never ever want to blindly follow anyone else's trade. Make sure you're following your own rules and your own risk tolerance. Let's take a look at a couple of these um, moving around. As you guys no, I've been mentioning Masco, and I still think Masco is nicely set up here for a potential upside move. We're holding in a tight consolidation this support area, but notice that we're sliding on out here. We tried to get a move going yesterday, and it just couldn't quite pop. 
and move on through with the selling that came in. But watch Masco for that opportunity here. Um, as you can see, holding above its 50 day, um, we do have a 500 and 200 day moving average up there that could provide some resistance. But um, I really like that trending pattern that's starting to show up. And this nice rest and consolidation gives us a relatively low risk entry into the trade. Um, if we take a look at some of the financials, take a look at Citibank. Now, Citibank has um, got that big support. Um, you caught the news that Warren Buffett was buying a big chunk of this. Um, got some support from Warren Buffett and it rallied really strongly. Now we're pulling back. A couple of things in here that are good and a couple of things not so good. First off, if we noticed here that upside trend, we've kind of given up that upside trend here so far. And even though we had broken through this resistance up here, we weren't able to hold it. Now, the good news side of the things is we're still trying to hold on to this little area of price support um, in the chart. And if we take a look at our moving averages here, you can see we have a bit of a moving average squeeze that could be setting up. We've got all of these moving averages consolidating together. Now, the question is going to be, will it squeeze it to the upside or to the downside? Can't really tell you that, but I would watch this pretty closely. This is a pattern that typically plays out pretty well and it's called a rounded bottom breakout pattern and this uh, this is a class taught my by my partner um, Rick Sadler and I got to tell you it's it's just it's a great pattern um, if we can find some motivation in the market um, this might have some opportunity so watch that closely and there are several others that are starting to show that in the financial sector we've got like Goldman Sachs um, trying to hold in a consolidating area here this resting pullback again pluses and minuses on these trades we still have uh, big downtrends that we're trying to defeat but we're trying to make those higher lows in some of these stocks so watch some of those financials they may have some uh, some opportunity let's take a look at some of the metals in here gld has been interesting um, i've been kind of keeping a close eye on gold and silver in this market and you'll notice here in this price action, we're holding on here right around that 500 and 200 day moving average. And we've got this nice little platform uh, forming in here. Um, so far, we haven't been able to get much going with this. We we uh, range around here but that's been kind of the the move of the market is just ranging around i think it does bear um some attention here um if um we start to see um, bond yields pull back they've been moving up pretty strongly if they start to pull back and we see a weakening of the u.s dollar as a result, we might start to see gold start to move up. So keep a close eye on that. And you might want to put silver in that list as well to just keep an eye on it. Now, again, these are not bullish patterns, you know, to, to say these are just getting ready to rip to the upside. Um, they still have that potential that they could still fail here. So it's something you want to put on your list and maybe keep a close eye on. Um, other metals that you might want to um, keep a close eye and take a look at FCX now FCX has had a pretty nice rally here recently I think it's due a little bit of a rest maybe even a pullback and if we take a look there's a little bit of an area right in here you can see a little bit of a support area that might come into play so watch for a little resting pullback in here let's see if we can set up that higher low in here maybe get a little copper going to the upside as well you'll notice that we're uh, challenged by that 50-day moving average right now. So if we can rest and hold and drag that 50-day moving average out here, that's where we have that opportunity to maybe pop on through to the upside. So keep a close eye on that. As you guys know, I've been keeping a fairly close eye and talked about this several times, FedEx. FedEx continues to just kind of drift along here like the rest of the market. Now, certainly we have the concerns and worries. We've got this downtrend in the chart. But if we can hold some support in here, 
get that higher low working in this chart, then we do have that opportunity. We might be able to turn that corner and move back to the upside. I've also been mentioning AMD here quite a lot, and AMD I think does have that potential, albeit we're still trying to struggle against that downtrend. We're trying to hold some price support in here, and we're trying to hold an upside trend. So if that were to rest, continue that rest in here, look for that opportunity that we might find that inspiration um, in there to the upside. So just keep a close eye on it. Now remember with that CPI number coming out on Friday, guys, anything is possible. If the CPI were to come in and show us a really strong, um, um, inflationary number that certainly could be bearish for the market um, and we could move sharply lower but then again the way the market has been acting when we get a bad number here in the last week or so we just don't care we just want to rally so it's possible that we could even get that push up on a bad number. If that number were to come in better than expected, then I would expect the bulls to, to really take advantage of that and really spring into action. So once again, that CPI, we're just in the big wait and see. The other thing that could move us around a little bit here today is Europe is waiting on a decision from, from their um, central bank today. So keep a close eye on that. Um, that certainly can have market ramifications for us. So with that, everyone, hey, probably going to be another choppy, boring, um, whipsawing, odd price action day on low volume. But, um, you know, that sometimes happens in the market and sometimes it's better to just stand aside than throw money at risk when we continue to gyrate around in a range like this. So be careful, everyone. I wanna wish you all a fantastic day, and I'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning, and perhaps that CPI can give us a market direction. Y'all take care, have a great one. See you in the morning.